and you will definitely be upset. You will nah. definitely be upset because you will be outstunning, motherfucker. <laughs> 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 I was just, <laughs> 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 nigga, start working out though. Just start man, like get in the gym, though, nigga. Yeah, you know, so I ain't gotta work out neither. You, but you know something, my thumbs are so strong from counting all that paper. But yo, hold on a second. Let me stop. Look at the stop. We gotta do this. Do, do I work? Do I work? Do I work? If you ain't have enough style to give me a pair of Reeboks, I asked you for a pair of Reeboks today. You ain't, you ain't got no clip. Yeah, fresh. You ain't even hook me up. Fifth one is unlike any of the others. This is from a man a male music producer named Rodney Jones. Now, his allegation is Combs forced him to solicit s workers and underage girls for s Okay. But also drug him, sexually assaulted him, and groomed him to have s with other men. You and Wayne had like like a kiss thing going on. Right. Oh, I know you got a child. You probably kiss him. You probably got a son and you kiss him. Yeah. You hear me? I always looked at Wayne as my son, and I always looked at it like, because I was in the streets, mm -hmm. and I thought this might be the last time they ever see me. Nah, man, you won't believe who decided to step forward and speak up against King Puff himself. This guy is tight with Diddy and has been since he first entered the rap scene, and it seems he's finally ready to make his mark in history by exposing none other than P. Diddy himself. I'm talking old school rapper and hip hop icon, Brian Christopher Williams aka Birdman. Apparently, at the peak of his career, he was spending some real time with Diddy, partying, going to the alleged freak-offs, and so much more. Now we all know what happened at those parties, and because of them, Diddy's reputation has been in the gutter lately, all starting with the all-too-well-known Cassie lawsuit, you know? The one where he allegedly violated and abused her for years, making her do unspeakable things. But it seems since then there has been a snowball effect of lawsuits hitting P. Diddy left and right. Just after he settled with Cassie, he got hit with three more accusations, all from different female individuals that he supposedly wronged over the last decade, and it didn't stop there. Just recently, one of his ex-employees and producers, Rodney Jones, dropped a bombshell by stepping forward and claiming that he went through the exact same essay that all the other gals endured. And get this, apparently, Birdman now sees an opportunity to shed light on the situation, exposing Diddy for his forceful behavior against everyone he has wronged. Cassie, Rodney, even Young Miami is on the list. And who better to tell the story than someone who was actually there to witness it, right? For all the new peeps watching, let me catch you up on what we know. Legal drama's become Diddy's new jam lately. It all kicked off when his ex, Cassie Ventura, decided to take him to court over their messed up past. With the clock ticking on the statute of limitations, Cassie wanted to hit back at Diddy using the law. In her official statement, she spilled that, even though years had passed, she was still dealing with the fallout. According to her lawsuit, Diddy had his hands in every part of her life, from her career to her medical records, and he wasn't exactly gentle, allegedly getting physical with her multiple times a year and pushing her to use all sorts of substances. What's interesting is that, the moment Cassie filed her complaint, Diddy's legal squad went into overdrive, sealing a deal just a day later. Despite Diddy's claims of innocence, that quick settlement tells a whole different story. Since then, three more women and one man have come forward with lawsuits against Combs, accusing him of all sorts of despicable behavior, from SA to grape and even non-consensual pornography. The music mogul has stylishly denied every single one of these claims, saying his accusers are just trying to tear down his character, reputation, and legacy. One of the accusers, Liza Gardner, recounted a disturbing encounter where she and her friend met Combs and singer-songwriter Aaron Hall at an MCA Records event back in 1990 or 1991. After partying at Hall's apartment, Gardner claimed she was plied with more drinks and coerced into being intimate with Combs, who also allegedly assaulted her friend. According to the lawsuit, the encounter left Gardner shocked and traumatized. As she tried to leave, Hall reportedly intervened, pinning her down and assaulting her as well. The other two complaints tell eerily similar stories. But it was the fifth lawsuit that really threw everyone for a loop. The whole Diddy saga hit its peak when music producer Rodney Jones brought his essay allegations to court. Rodney, aka Lil Rod, was working on Combs' latest album, Love, and crashed at his place from September 2022 to November 2023. Jones dropped a bombshell, claiming he was constantly getting groped and touched inappropriately by Mr. Combs without ever asking for it. And here's the kicker. 
In one downright disturbing incident, Jones woke up stark naked and all discombobulated in bed with Combs and two other adults. He insisted the music mogul had spiked his drink to take advantage of him. The complaint also dropped a bombshell, alleging that as Combs' videographer, Jones snagged hundreds of hours of footage and audio recordings of Mr. Combs, his crew, and guests getting up to some seriously illegal shenanigans. We're talking acquiring illegal substances, hiring adult workers, slipping spiked drinks to minors, and S.A. On top of that, Jones's lawsuit threw shade at several other big shots, including Combs' son Justin, his chief of staff Christina Cora, Universal Music Group CEO Sir Lucian Grange, and former Motown Records CEO Ethiopia Haptimarium. But even with Rodney's jaw-dropping claims, Combs' lawyer Sean Hawley came out guns blazing, vehemently denying every single one of Jones's allegations. Lil Rod is nothing more than a liar who filed a $30 million lawsuit shamelessly looking for an undeserved payday. His reckless name-dropping about events that are pure fiction and simply did not happen is nothing more than a transparent attempt to garner headlines. We have overwhelming, indisputable proof that his claims are complete lies. Our attempts to share this proof with Mr. Jones's attorney, Tyrone Blackburn, have been ignored as Mr. Blackburn refuses to return our calls. We will address these outlandish allegations in court and take all appropriate action against those who make them. Despite that, the lawsuits have dealt a devastating blow to Diddy's career. One major casualty was the cancellation of a new reality show featuring Combs, which was in the works at Hulu. The show, tentatively titled Diddy Plus 7, would have followed Combs and his family. In late November, Diddy temporarily stepped down as chairman of Revolt, the media company he founded in 2013. Additionally, Capital Prep Harlem, a charter school he established in 2016, announced it would sever ties with the music mogul. It's safe to say that Diddy's reputation has hit rock bottom. Fans fear that the rap legend's legacy could be irreparably tarnished, regardless of how these allegations and lawsuits unfold. Anyway, Lil Rod didn't hold back in his accusations against the music mogul. He revealed that Diddy attempted to intimidate him by flaunting his involvement in criminal activities. Rod disclosed that he witnessed an incident where Diddy and his son were supposedly involved in an altercation that resulted in someone being struck. Interestingly, when law enforcement arrived on the scene, Diddy allegedly concocted a story about an anonymous drive-by shooting, despite the victim being found inside the bathroom. This incident reportedly occurred in September 2022 at a producer's camp at Chalice Recording Studio in LA. However, there's a glaring inconsistency in the producer's claims. The LAPD report stated that the shooting involving G occurred a few blocks away from the studio, a detail confirmed by TMZ. G was reportedly assaulted by two individuals who robbed him at gunpoint. Furthermore, police arrested three individuals two months later, linking them to the shooting and other robberies in the area. Hold on, there's more to the lawsuit that's even more unsettling. Lil Rod also revealed some disturbing details about Diddy's bedroom behavior. According to Lil Rod, when Diddy attempted to pressure him into intimacy, Diddy started dropping names of high-profile individuals he claimed to have been involved with intimately, including a Philadelphia rapper who was previously linked to Nicki Minaj. Internet detectives quickly connected the dots and speculated that the rapper in question was Meek Mill. This speculation gained traction when another industry insider seemingly corroborated the claim while attempting to defend Meek's reputation. Wait. Oh, oh, hold up. Never mind. Wait, what the f***? I forgot. Look, Mr. Combs informed Mr. Jones that he had engaged in sexual intercourse with rapper five. That's redacted. Look, five. He's a Philadelphia rapper who dated Nicki Minaj. The frenzy surrounding these allegations has resurfaced an old video in which Nicki Minaj hinted at knowing undisclosed information about individuals in the entertainment industry who are keeping their sexual orientation private. Interestingly, Nicki was in a relationship with Meek Mill at the time, and when she made these remarks, Meek responded with nervous laughter and evasive comments. While Nicki hasn't explicitly confirmed these claims, she also hasn't denied them, hinting at potential discomfort with Meek's alleged proximity to Diddy. But that's not all the tea that's been spilled. Internet sleuths uncovered an interview with Meek Mill on the Million Dollars Worth of Game Show, where he openly admitted to having strong feelings for his male cellmates while incarcerated. The podcast, hosted by rapper and actor Gilly the King, captured Meek's candid confession, leading fans to speculate about his sexual orientation despite his previous assertions of being straight. 
If you're dealing with somebody for a long period of time, it don't matter if I left or you left, you still gonna, you can have a celly. Mm -hmm. Nah, dude, you got a celly for three oh, months. That nigga they call it, celly left. Pack it up, go ahead to New Jail. You gonna feel like you just lost a chick. You know how it is, it's just, you gonna be how hurt about it. How many times you felt like that? <laughs> no, 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 no. <laughs> you ain't never lose your celly and feel like you lost no, no, no. Not only that, Diddy himself was caught calling Meek Mill indecent names. In the viral clip, Fans felt as though Diddy may have taken his friendship with Meek a bit too far. Meek was chilling in the pool when Diddy congratulated him on his success. Man, you doing it, man. You deserve it, daddy. You putting in that work. Proud of you. I love you. According to the latest updates, Meek wasn't the only one who was supposedly tight with the music mogul. You see, while Diddy was just calling Meek daddy, he had taken his affection to another level with none other than the rapper Birdman. Yeah, you heard that right. Although there have been loads of rumors swirling around about their bond, it was the first time we caught Diddy in the act. We all know how homophobia has been a big deal in society, but with cameras everywhere, everything's bound to come to light sooner or later, just like Diddy's alleged relationships. And you will definitely be upset. You will definitely be upset because you will be outstunning, motherfucker. I would just... <laughs> nigga, start working out though. Just start man, like get in the gym, though, no, nigga. You know something? I ain't gotta work out neither. You, but you know something? My thumbs is so strong from counting all that paper. But yo, hold on a second. Let <laughs> me stop. Look at the stop. You gotta do this. Do, this. do I work? Do I work? Believe this. Do I work? If you ain't have enough style to give me a pair of Reeboks, I asked you for a pair of Reeboks today. You ain't, you ain't got no clip. Yeah, fresh. You ain't even hook me up. Birdman claimed that the kiss with Lil Wayne was simply a display of their brotherly love and bond. He emphasized that their relationship was beyond friendship. It was more like family. However, many fans found this explanation hard to swallow, especially considering the nature of the kiss and the context in which it occurred. Some speculated that there might be more to their relationship than what Birdman was letting on, especially given their long history together in the music industry. First of all, my own son, I would kiss him. I always looked at Wayne as my son, and I always looked at it like, because I was in the streets, and I thought this might be the last time he ever see me. I was his father, when he didn't have a father since he was nine years old, and I love him like my own, and I'd give my life for him. After Birdman and Lil Wayne locked lips, people were tripping over it big time. It's like, okay, even if they're close, ain't no need to smooch on camera like that. Fans were straight up cringing. Some even said it was like watching a train wreck in slow motion. And let's keep it real, if they were blood relatives, maybe it wouldn't be as awkward. But this, nah, it was just too much. Plus, word on the street is, their fan base took a nosedive after that stunt. But you kiss them like on the cheek or the forehead, especially when you're both grown men. Matter of fact, grown a men at most should hug and not be kissing. He tried to put some respect on his shame. A few years after they claimed to be like family, things went sour in 2015 when Lil Wayne dropped a $51 million lawsuit on Cash Money. He was heated because his album, That Carter Vive, got delayed twice. It was a messy showdown in court, and rumors were flying that the lawsuit was about more than just the music. Some said it involved some real greeny stuff. Lil Wayne tried to play it off, but around that time, he straight up told Rolling Stone that he and Birdman weren't even talking anymore. Billboard later spilled the tea that the lawsuit got settled in 2018 for some hush-hush amount, and Birdman even dropped a public apology during Lil Louisiana Fest, saying, I knew this day was going to come, but I didn't know when it was going to come. I'm sorry. Now let's talk about Diddy's rumored bedfellows. Rodney Jones's lawsuit stirred the pot, claiming Diddy was also getting cozy with Usher, who just rocked the Super Bowl halftime show and was killing it with his Vegas gigs. You know, the rumors about Diddy pulling strings with Usher have been swirling for ages, and it all came to a head when Usher spilled some wild stories about living it up at Diddy's crib. I got a chance to see some things. I went there to see the lifestyle and I saw it. Usher said, it was pretty wild. It was crazy. They called me Baby Boo. He wasn't disciplinary. He was letting me be a young man. He was always a family member from afar, so I never felt a disconnection. I will always look at him like a brother. You'd think if Usher had such a blast at Diddy's pad, he'd want to introduce his own kids to the party scene, right? But when that idea came up, Usher shut it down real quick. Fans took that as a sign that Usher's denial said more than his praises ever could. Now, during the Club Shay Shay podcast, Usher was all about giving props to Diddy, saying he was a mentor who shaped his career. But according to Gene, Usher learned a lot from Diddy, just not the stuff about business. Gene reckoned that Usher's shoutouts to Diddy were a slick move by Diddy himself, 
because of some drama kicked off by Cat Williams' interview on the same platform. Gene put it like this, I know and people know that was around in that time that Puff and Usher did have a situation, and that situation led Usher to the hospital. Now, I'll let Usher explain that to y'all. I'll let Usher tell that story. But how dare you say a man that conditioned you, you're gonna give him a pass. You know I know. Anyway, let's not forget about Diddy's former security detail spilling the tea for years. Gene Deal dropped a bomb when he claimed Diddy had some shifty business with rapper J. Rule. According to Gene, back in the early 2000s, while working as J. Rule's bodyguard, he tagged along with Diddy to a bookstore where Diddy bought a bunch of adult toys. Then, they took these goodies to a concert in North Carolina where J. Rule was performing. Diddy wanted to surprise J. Rule by dropping by his suite unannounced, but Gene wasn't feeling it. However, Diddy brushed off his concerns and went anyway. J. Rule didn't boot Diddy out of his suite, but entertained him for a good while. When Gene asked why they were taking so long, J. Rule allegedly hinted that he didn't want to know, implying some wild stuff was going down. But wait, there's more. Gene claimed Diddy had regular spots for picking up dudes. He spilled the beans in an interview with Art of Dialogue saying, I knew I used to wait outside a Turkish baths for him. You know what they do in the Turkish baths? I saw this dude pick up butt plugs. That's the first time I ever seen some shit like that. That's where a lot of gay men meet. And they all take hot baths together. To each his own though, bruh. Gene claimed that bathhouses were hot spots for all sorts of shady activities. He alleged that during conversations with some individuals, they confessed about their rendezvous in these places where they could strip down without raising eyebrows. Talk about hiding in plain sight. Now getting back to Jaw Rule, he chimed in and attempted to salvage Diddy's tarnished reputation. Another black man in this industry going through some unfortunate, you know, circumstances. And so, you know, I wish I wish him luck as well with, with everything he's going through. And, you know, I, I you know, and, and and if there's victims in this, you know, I it, you know I, I, I can't speak on things that I don't know about Piss. Ja Rule's apparent effort to support Diddy while downplaying the accuser's claims raised suspicions among fans. Many speculated that Ja Rule might have been pressured by higher ups to publicly back Diddy Combs. Moreover, the recent lawsuit highlighted that Diddy allegedly installed cameras in all the rooms where he hosted his parties, recording all the shady activities. It's possible that blackmail could be a motivating factor behind Usher's and Ja Rule's unwavering support. You might be wondering why Meek Mill wasn't part of this whitewashing agenda. Well, Meek's actions speak for themselves. When it was revealed that Meek was the person romantically involved with Diddy, he didn't follow the same script as Ja Rule. Instead, just hours after his identity was exposed, Meek took to social media to share his jumbled thoughts with the world. He claimed that higher-ups were trying to expose snitches within the industry and vowed to uncover those behind the attempt to tarnish the image of influential black artists, including himself. Meek then tried to shift gears by expressing support for his LGBTQ fans, though not without emphasizing his preference for female anatomy. One love to the gay people, but that juicy private, do it for me. I done ran red lights to get that feeling y'all weird on here like devil's law. If you think these moves would have silenced Meek, you're dead wrong. Meek switched gears yet again, this time openly cursing out the higher-ups and vowing to uncover who was behind these campaigns. He said, when I find out we gone take them to war for trying to stop my family wealth, something never seen before will happen in the industry, even if I gotta risk my life for it. I'm the average move him out the way type thing. In a desperate attempt to deflect responsibility, Meek started firing shots at DJ Academics. Meek went after Academics, alleging that he had already warned AK not to speak about him. Meek claimed that the next time he saw AK, he wouldn't hesitate to physically confront him. But let's face it, Meek's pointing fingers at AK was a bit off the mark. Well, AK served Meek a reality check on a silver platter. Wait, did you blame me for what a lawsuit said like I just made it up? Lol, no way. Lol. Honestly, I don't even think Meek gay, but it's weird ASF he got on Elon Musk Twitter to blame me for what a lawsuit said and promote a song lol. Dog, you know, you can just say that's not true. They're lying. Bruh, done dropped his trailer more times than SoundCloud link like he trying to use it as promo lol. That's odd to me. AK weighed in on the situation and suggested that Diddy's lawsuit was a direct result of Young Miami's actions. According to AK, 
he had a private conversation with Miami, advising her to watch her words when she felt slighted. However, Miami disregarded AK's advice, as she typically did. When things hit the fan, AK recalled a prior spat between Miami and Gina, one of Diddy's exes, which supposedly led to the exposure of Diddy's questionable behavior. Gina allegedly taunted Diddy about fathering a child with another woman while in a relationship. Miami, feeling offended, reportedly threatened Gina with retaliation if she continued to speak out. AK speculated that Miami's self-centered behavior played a role in Diddy's downfall even suggesting that she might have been involved in Diddy's alleged inappropriate activities. Additionally, court documents suggested that Young Miami facilitated her cousin's inappropriate behavior towards the plaintiff. Lil Rod claimed that Miami was present during the incident, but did nothing to intervene. The complaint implied that Miami's cousin attempted to engage in inappropriate conduct with Lil Rod, while Diddy and his staff were present. While using the restroom, Young Miami's cousin burst into the bathroom and began groping Mr. Jones, Mr. Jones believes that Mr. Combs sent her in there to S.A. Mr. Jones. As she entered the bathroom, she dropped to her knees and began performing oral intimacy on Mr. Jones' exposed private. Mr. Jones pushed her away and exited the bathroom. Young Miami has been noticeably silent about Diddy's legal troubles, but it appears she's distancing herself from his mess rather swiftly. While her rumored beau was caught up in court battles, she's been busy planning events. However, it would have been noteworthy if Diddy had been invited but he was conspicuously absent. Furthermore, Koresha shared visuals of the gathering and some of her guests, but eagle-eyed fans and critics alike observed that there wasn't a plus one included in the footage. Oh, my best friend. Yes, yeah. yeah, Saucy Sunset. Ah! <laughs> we had a friend's giving. I'm thankful for my baby gal. Remember those rumors swirling about Miami pocketing a hefty sum of 500K from Diddy? Well, Fans see this as the ultimate red flag because that kind of cash usually comes with a lot of shady dealings attached. One fan put it bluntly, I've always said, think of all the things us normal people have to do to make the little bit of money we make. Now imagine what would be expected of us if we're being paid 500k a month. No one gets to make that kind of money without compromising some morals. Meek Mill recently alarmed fans when he shared a photo of a car accident he was involved in. He claimed that the brake pedal slipped off while he was driving his new car for the first time. However, this accident stirred up speculation among fans, partly fueled by a report from November 2023. After Diddy and his ex Cassie split, she made several allegations against the renowned producer. Cassie claimed that her romance with Kid Cudi ended dramatically when Diddy allegedly had the day and night artist's car blown up out of jealousy. Given the timing of Meek's accident, some fans couldn't help but wonder if Diddy was somehow involved in the incident. So what do you think? Is there any truth behind Birdman's relationship with Diddy? Or are things blown out of proportion? Let us know in the comments below. And if you like this video, hit that subscribe button so you never miss out on any new videos. And until then fam, keep it real.